Let's talk about serotonin, shall we? Serotonin is his nickname. His real name is 5-hydroxytryptamine, which came from tryptophan. It's a neurotransmitter made of tryptophan secreted by nerve endings, especially in your brain, the gut, oh yay, and the platelets, it's part of their granules. Okay, after serotonin has performed its function, let's get rid of it via MAO-A, monoamine oxidase subtype A enzyme. When serotonin is secreted and has performed its function, let's actually get it back, take it back. This is called reuptake. Who is helping this? Serotonin transporter. Who is blocking this? A class of medication known as selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Love the name. The MAO enzyme can metabolize dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine, and serotonin. What's the difference between MAO A and MAO B? MAO A is everywhere, especially liver, neurons, GI. MAO B is brain and platelets, B and P. MAO A will metabolize epinephrine, norepinephrine, serotonin, dopamine, tyramine. MAO B will metabolize dopamine. Do you have a medication that inhibits MAO A and MAO B? Yes, you have phenylzine and trinylcypromine, and they are used for depression. Do you have a medication that only inhibits MAO B? aka a selective mal B inhibitor that's selectively used for Parkinson's. Why do you call serotonin 5-hydroxytryptamine? Because it comes from tryptophan. Tryptophan by tryptophan hydroxylase will give you 5-hydroxytryptophan. By the aromatic amino acid decarboxylase will give you serotonin, which is 5-hydroxytryptamine. Of course, after you pass by the aromatic amino acid, you'll become a freaking amine. Do you remember the platelet structure? The platelet has a plasma membrane and a cytoplasm. The cytoplasm has granules. These granules are either alpha granules or dense delta granules. These delta granules include what? Serotonin. So serotonin is in the platelet. Serotonin is a delta granule. And then the platelet can secrete serotonin into the serum. Oh, by the way, you know why we call it serotonin? <laughs> because it's in the serum. Oh! Serotonin is the ligand. How about the serotonin receptor? Oh, you have many of them. This is the largest known neurotransmitter receptor family in the world. Let's go serotonin. There is 5-HT1, 5-HT2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. 1 is GI coupled. 2 is GQ. 2, Q, Q, 2, QT. 3 works with the sodium potassium channel. 4, GS coupled. 5, GI coupled. 6, GS coupled. 7 is also GS coupled. And then 5-HT1 receptors subdivided into 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E. 2 is divided into 2A, 2B, 2C, and 5 is 5A and 5B. These are called serotonin receptor subtypes. These are called serotonin receptor subdivisions. 5-HT2A receptor will make you anorgasmic. 5-HT2C will make you gain weight. We say to see these fat rolls, to see that wildebeest. How about 5-HT3? Oh, that is for vomiting. We will vomit on three. Are you ready? One, two. <laughs> Drugs that act on the serotonin receptor are many, including the SSRIs, buspirone, atypical antipsychotics, hydroxazine, cyproheptadine, and the 5-HT3 antagonist ondansetron. If 5-HT3 makes you vomit on three, then ondansetron will block it. That's why ondansetron is an anti-emetic, especially after chemotherapy. So if you're giving your patient chemotherapy, it's very likely it's gonna cause vomiting. Give undansetron to prevent the vomiting. What is depression? No one knows. The biochemical explanation or hypothesis of depression goes like this. Norepinephrine is low, serotonin is low, dopamine is low. And that's why the medications include selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. What are you trying to achieve? Oh, I'm trying to increase my serotonin by preventing its reuptake so that it stays in the freaking synapse. Why do we use SSRIs? Depression, but that's not the only thing. Anxiety as well, including obsessive compulsive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, panic disorder, bulimia nervosa. How do they work? They block the reuptake of serotonin. Serotonin will increase. When serotonin increases, it will give you all of these, including vomiting, agitation, anxiety, sexual dysfunction, including anorgasmia. When serotonin is so high, you might actually bleed, and that's why you don't give SSRI with aspirin, and you don't give them with warfarin. Be very careful. But what if I increase serotonin too much? You can get serotonin syndrome, and you can gain weight like crazy. 
So the pharmaceutical treatment of depression include first line is SSRI, second line atypical antipsychotics, TCA, third line is MAO inhibitors. What if they did not work? Try buspirone. Thyroid hormone might help. If everything hits the fan, you can try ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. The spelling B. Let's talk about some medications that start with a B. Buprenorphine is an opiate. It sounds like morphine if you think about it. Butarphenol is an opiate. Biopropion, it increases release and decreases the reuptake of what? Dopamine and norepinephrine. So dopamine will go up, norepinephrine will go up. It's, it's used for depression and smoking cessation. Buspirone is a serotonin agonist, and that's why it's used for anxiety. How about the atypical antipsychotics? What are they trying to do? Are they trying to block dopamine and to block serotonin receptor strongly? Atypical antipsychotics are the number one drug of choice for schizophrenia. They can also help for depression, but be careful because they may prolong your QT interval. And this is called long QT syndrome. Before you know it, you can have toxade point, give magnesium sulfate. Here is a beautiful summary of the atypical antipsychotic drugs. Notice almost all of them block serotonin receptors, especially 2A. All of them can prolong your QT interval. Now, what is serotonin syndrome? This is a syndrome where you have too much serotonin. Well, no, duh. What are the causes? Many things, including if you overdose on SSRI or if you're taking them with something else. What else can cause it? Carcinoid syndrome. It's a serotonin secreting tumor. Symptoms, rigidity, hyperthermia, flushing, myoclonus, autonomic instability, diarrhea, confusion, delirium, coma, death. How do you treat serotonin syndrome? Give benzodiazepine. It's a sedative, it's hypnotic. Calm down, patient. Calm the flip down. Of course, if it's an emergency, remember your ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. You can try ciproheptidine because it inhibits serotonin. Please memorize these drug-drug interactions. Don't give serotonin with any of these doofuses because it can lead to serotonin syndrome. Don't give selective serotonin uptake inhibitor with these two doofuses because you can bleed. The SSRIs inhibit the P450 system except citalopram. Let's talk about combos. Good combos. Giving SSRIs and benzo, that's a good combo. It decreases agitation, anxiety, headache, and insomnia. Giving it with bupropion is very good for sexual dysfunction. Bupropion, you'll be pumping, baby. Do you remember our discussion about antihistamines? Yeah. Remember when we said that hydroxazine is antihistamine, also antiserotonin? Remember my favorite, ciproheptidine, antihistamine, and antiserotonin, and we can use it to treat serotonin syndrome? Yeah. So hydroxazine is used for anxiety. Ciproheptidine is used for serotonin syndrome, which includes carcinoid syndrome. When you give a patient chemotherapy, what can happen? They can vomit. How do I prevent this? Give on Dancitrone because it blocks 5-HT3 because we vomit on 3. You can also try something else called Aprepitant. How does it work? It's a neurokinin 1 receptor antagonist. Let's review some chemotherapy. If you give a patient cyclophosphamide, don't forget to give mesna with it to prevent hemorrhagic cystitis. If you're giving methotrexate, don't forget to give leucovorin rescue to decrease folate deficiency. If you're giving cisplatin, give amifostin to protect the kidney. Also, you give undancitrone so that you don't vomit. If you will give doxorubicin, Give dextrazoxane with it. The D with the D. Why? To decrease cardiotoxicity. If you choose irinotecan, give loperamide to decrease the risk of life-threatening diarrhea. Any chemotherapy can rupture your cells. Oh, something like tumor lysis syndrome? Yep, you give fluids and allopurinol. Fluids are even more important than allopurinol. Don't forget to also give vitamin B6 for the skin. Weight loss medications include lorcasirin, and this is an agonist on 5H22C, oh, the one that's uh, uh, like associated with obesity. Yes, but here in the hypothalamus, especially in the satiety center in the hypothalamus. Oh, so you're making me feel full earlier so that I don't eat as much. That's right. We're trying to help you lose weight. Side effects, of course, include anorexia. How do SSRIs work? They block the reuptake of serotonin by blocking SERT protein. It stands for serotonin transporter. It's a sodium dependent serotonin transporter, by the way. Why do you use SSRIs? Depression, anxiety, bulimia, etc. 
atypical antipsychotics, they block 5-HT2A, and we use them for psychosis and for depression. Hydroxyzine, ciproheptidine for anxiety, serotonin syndrome, carcinoid syndrome. They block histamine, they block serotonin. Undancitrone, anti-5-HT3, because we vomit on 3. It's anti-emetic. With chemotherapy and with radiation therapy. Buspirone. It's a partial agonist on 5-HT1A, used for anxiety and general anxiety disorder. Lorcasirin, oh, for weight loss baby, and it's an agonist on 5-HT2C in the satiety center of your hypothalamus. Sumatriptan, agonist on 1B1D, and used for headache, including migraine. Ergotamine, 5-HT2, partial agonist for headache, including migraine. Methysergide, another ergot. And it's also used for migraine headache, but the mechanism is different. It's a 5-HT2 blocker. This table is so good. Now, you said before medicosis that serotonin is released by the gut. Why? Because it helps with peristalsis. When you eat food, food will stretch your bowel. The stretch will release serotonin. Serotonin acts on the sensory neurons and then activates the myenteric plexus. What's the function of the myenteric plexus that starts with an M? Well, motility. What is carcinoid syndrome? It's a serotonin secreting tumor. Where is the tumor? GI tract or the bronchi? How can I diagnose it? Serotonin will be high in the serum and the urine. And the metabolite of serotonin, known as 5-HIAA or 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid, is going to be increased in the serum and the urine. So when we're done with serotonin, we metabolize it into 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid. It's a serotonin syndrome. Oh, serotonin is everywhere, baby. When you have serotonin everywhere, it's going to happen. It's going to increase GI motility. This is what serotonin does, causing secretory diarrhea and cramps. It's going to vasodilate because G is coupled, flushing and hypotension. Bronchoconstriction because some serotonin receptors are GQ coupled, bronchospasm and wheezing. Carcinoid disease in the heart, carcinoid heart disease. What does it affect? Valves giving you pulmonic stenosis with tricuspid regurgitation. This is so important. How do you treat carcinoid syndrome? If you have too much serotonin, uh, give me something to block that serotonin, such as ciproheptidine. Or give me the universal inhibitor, octreotide, because it's a somatostatin analog, and somatostatin is a universal inhibitor. This doofus inhibits everything. It even inhibits its own secretion. Just think about that. Remember, tryptophan can give you niacin. Tryptophan can also give you serotonin. And serotonin can give you melatonin. When you metabolize serotonin, give 5-hydroxyindole acetic acid. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later.